time for a meeting. I can't say no. <laughs> kind of hard. Matter of fact, I gotta have a meeting with a mathematician. I can understand. <laughs> I submit to the authority. And, though, and I don't want people around me that just agree. <laughs> I like correction. That's the problem. You've got to learn to love correction. Because God is correcting God. And the stuff we've been through, we need correction. You know? If you're not willing to take God's correction, the scripture says you're none of it. That's right. And watch this. He uses a very hard word. And it ain't even a four-letter word. I don't know why they call it a cuss word. God says you're a bastard. That's right. All it means is illegitimate. He said you're a yeah. bastard if you're not accepting my correction and discipline. Amen. I think that's five letters or something like that. Four. But anyway. But a lot of you want to be made a bastard. And then God just looks at you and says, well, we made a bastard. It's a bastard. Amen. All right. Did we read Proverbs 3 and 3? Yeah. We go to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Verse 22. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. Amen. Do they err that devise evil? Amen. I gotta explain that. You make an error when you devise evil. But mercy and truth shall be to them that what? Decide to make good. good. Make their practices good. It don't mean you're gonna do it overnight, but you have a mindset. I like what James told me. He said, man, I just made up my mind. You know, and you can't be worried about what people think. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? You just can't. People are not going to let you go further because they want you to stay where they are. Right. They want you to be poor and dumb, just like this. Right. If you're focused on people, you got a problem. They right. will keep you down. Right. Right. But my man, you don't need to be doing all that. <laughs> oh man, you done. Boy, you, you, that's just too much. <laughs> it don't take all of that. Oh, yeah. It may take all that more for you. Amen. Amen. Get away from people. Amen. You need to start connecting yourself with people who are going where you want to be. That's right. Amen. 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 Cool. That's it. Get around positive folks. You got to get away from people who are always condemning, mm. always criticizing. Yeah. They ain't got nothing good to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything come out their lips is negative. <laughs> but they ain't got not one positive thing in their life. <laughs> but they right. <laughs> well, show me some examples of why you're right. <laughs> or just get the step. At least you say back. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. What's iniquity? Sin. By mercy and truth, sin is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Amen. Amen. Y'all yes. well, see how mercy and truth go together now? Ain't that awesome? Yes, it do. So when you start thinking about if you make a mistake and you don't want Ron to catch you, Mike to catch you, Jeffrey to catch you, truth is what's going to get you through. Because yes. believe me, if they're asking you the question, they already know the truth. Yeah. <laughs> when I used to cheat on women all the time back in the 80s. <laughs> and they would come to me and ask me about the other girl. I knew to tell them because they wouldn't have came to me and asked me if they didn't know the truth. Plus, they found a letter from the other girl on the car. <laughs> Plus, I had other car keys. So, they don't need mine. Now they call, what's, your, what's, the, what's the excuse out of it now? Uh, they're friends with benefits. Hmm? Well, the world got a friend with a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, friends with benefit. 
Official way to say I'm full of cheat. <laughs> All right. What makes God? What makes God a merciful God? Amen. What makes God a merciful God? Do y'all know God is a merciful God? You got to know it if you're sitting in this room and still breathing. He is a merciful God. Ain't no telling what half of y'all been through just last night alone. And made it here to get breakfast, get a cup of coffee, be in a place warm. He's a merciful God. What makes him merciful? Number one, he, his character and personality yeah. makes him be merciful. All right. Number two, his compassion yes, makes him a merciful God. Yes, sir. And number three, the cost he pays yes, sir. makes him oh, a merciful oh, God. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Why do you think he can give you all this mercy? Let's look at his personality and character first. Go to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus 34. Oh, we rolling here. Y'all learning anything? Well, ask me after service. This is Sunday service. Exodus 34. Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 and 9. 34, verse 5 through 9. And the Lord descended into the cloud and stood with them there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. What are we talking about? That's when Moses had threw the, the uh, Ten Commandments down and killed all those idolatrous people. The ground swallowed them up. Then Moses had to cut some new tablets and meet God where? In the clouds. Cut some more. See, your prayers meet him in the clouds now. Fuck off. Chill with that. All right. And the Lord descended into the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Yes. Look at his character. Yes. Oh my yes. God. Yes. Keeping mercy for thousands. Oh, and so you got to see, that could have been billions there. But back in those days, thousand was the top number they had. That's why they would say tens of thousands of thousands of thousands because they didn't have billion yet, much less billion or trillion. Now we got something called a Googleplex. Mm. Amen? Never ending. <laughs> but that's what he meant. Matter of fact, we can put Googleplex in. Y'all heard, heard of Google.com, right? Yeah. That's the biggest number scientists came up with is Googleplex. That's why it's called Google. Oh, y'all just learned something. Mm. Verse 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Upon the children. No, clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and unto the fourth. Generate. Oh, that's so good. Thank you, Jesus. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. Yeah. Well, you see all that. So when you worship God for the forgiving mercy he had on you. And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight. O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us. For it is a stiff-necked people. Hello. Y'all know stiff-necked. The neck's so stiff they can't even bend it. Lord says turn. They have to turn your whole body. Yeah. <laughs> stiff neck. I like what I like what Stephen told his Pharisees. He said, you're stiff neck and uncircumcised and hard ears. Woo! They took up stones and killed my boy over there. <laughs> he told me you got foreskin over your heart, foreskin over your ears. You can't hear nothing. You're stiff neck something. See, y'all don't hear Christians talk like that. It's in the word. Not looking at me like I'm a gangster. You can call me a gangster preacher. <laughs> they stink that people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine what inheritance. But look at God's character. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at it in the New Testament. We're almost finished. Got a couple more things to go. I've got 20 more minutes, so y'all got to sit here when you like it or not. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. This thing going better than I thought. Uh, I, my thing is this. I study. I know. I study so hard, and the things I study a lot of times are for a church congregation. But that's when I come out, of, right? Because y'all took all the stuff I used to teach 
over the last 10, 15 years for rehabs, homeless shelters, you know, prison, mentally ill hospitals, old folks shelters, uh, 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 what they call hospice centers. Y'all know what a hospice center is, right? That's where people know they're going to die. How much word can you get them? Because they don't know when they're going to die. Like most of them were dying the next day and got born again. I'm like, God, how come you using me like that? See? Have you ever been in a room where people are just going to die? They can yeah. die the moment you're talking to them? Yeah. Yeah. Then they're on a respirator. I remember my uncle was dying and his chest was going up and down. Mm -hmm. But I whispered in his ear the Lord's word. Yeah. And no moment I finished, the priest came in, unplugged him, and he died. But I knew he heard every word I said. Yes, he yeah. And I believe he's in heaven. Because it was like a little thing yeah. came down. Oh, Jesus. And I was, I was cool after that. But anyway, Ephesians chapter 2, looking at more of God's character. Because, you know, this month was the, uh, was the third year that my mama died. And my pastor, back in Philadelphia, his mother just died uh, this week. No, last week. But it, it just amazes me. We're still human beings. Amen. And his father just died not too long after that. And he posted it. And here was a man that people exalt a lot of times. But you got to see his humanity. He was hurting. He lost his best friend. You know? And I had to reflect that, yeah, my mama was gone three years ago, too. And the first thing I did was sin when Amen. I heard she died. Amen. Because the pain was so deep. Yes, well, how did you sin, Warren? I smoked cigarettes. See, I ain't ashamed of my game. I had quit for six years. Came here. She died. Brother was standing next to me. Give me one of them. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pain. You're human. Yes. Didn't even get high off of them. It was like I never quit. In my addiction, I smoked four packs a day. Because you had to have one lit every time while you were smoking dope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It was like an appendage to my head. <laughs> Then my wife would walk in the room just to keep her from knowing what the smell was. Well, she wouldn't know what the smell was because she just said, I know what that is. That's crack. I'd have said, when you been smoking? <laughs> because the only people who know what crack smell like are those who smoke it. You want to walk up in the room, hey, man, you smoke crack. Well, when was the last time you had it? <laughs> 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 All she used to walk in, it's not sharp in here. You're smoking too many cigarettes. I'd be like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians 2, let's look at God's character. Ephesians 2, look at verse 1. And you have he quickened. Word quickened means brought alive. You have he brought alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, yeah, right, yeah. the devil right, yeah. and his schemes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> according to the prince of the power of the air. Right. Amen. The spirit that now worketh in the children of what? Disobedience. Death neck. Hello. He works in you because you refuse the truth. He like, I got that sucker. He all oh my. Oh, I'm gonna have me some fried bacon cubes. <laughs> Slice him and dice him, Jack. Shish kebab. <laughs> yeah. And just laughing. God, I got another one of yours. Because that's his whole desire. He know he's going to hell. Matter of fact, he's going to a place called Abyss. But he said, I'm going to take one every one as many as I can get a God's children who he loved with me and watch him fry like bacon. And he said, all I got to do is keep them prideful, keep them believing in the untruth, keep them not believing in the one and true God. It ain't the fact that you don't read, it ain't the fact that you don't study, it's the fact that there's a God-given box yes. inside of you that says he's real. Yes. Yes. My mother was mentally retarded, couldn't read nor write, but she in heaven. But she never missed a Sunday service. All right, <laughs> never missed one. Then go right back home and smoke four packs cigarettes. <laughs> But in the end, that's what killed her, too. But you ain't going to tell me she ain't in heaven. You ain't 
came. Come on, tell me that. She knew he loved Jesus. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation. Conversation means lifestyle. We had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh of the mind, and whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, Jesus Christ, rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened or brought us alive, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Amen. Amen. Oh, I guess y'all ain't saved by grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, by grace you're saved. Verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. Woo! Toward us through Jesus Christ. Look at his character and personality. For by grace are you saved through faith. No faith in Jesus, you ain't saved. No. Hello. And that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. You ain't did nothing to earn it. Thank you. You did not do one thing. That's why I tell people, don't be waiting until you talk about that crap. This is the biggest excuse you hear from people with sin. I gotta wait till I finish before I come to Jesus. Well, you ain't gonna finish. <laughs> we'll be praying over you, dropping you in the hole. Well, he was waiting until he was finished. Well, now he's finished. <laughs> No, come to him and let him take it out of you. Amen. Let him work it out, and he will. That's right. Amen. Amen. All he's looking for is the right heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Watch things just drop off and drop off and drop off. Yeah. You know, like I told you, it was so easy after six years of quit smoking, just that one butt pushed mm -hmm. made me pick it back up yeah. again like a rat to cheese. But it also made me realize anything I've done in my life, the right button can be pushed. Come on, man. Yeah. Hello. And I'll pick it up like a rat to cheese. Amen. Yeah, man. That's why you got to constantly keep giving it over to God. <coughs> Verse 8 again. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works. You can't do not enough work to get born again. Yeah. Lest any man should boast. Because if you're doing all the work, guess what? You ain't going to give God no glory. You're going to say it's all about you. Ain't never been about you. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. All right, we're going to look at God's compassion, but because I told you earlier, I want to see if I can find it. I think it's in Romans 1. Yeah, go to Romans 1 real quick. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go, that's what I want. Yeah. Romans 1. See, you're without excuse. You don't have to have the Bible. You don't have to know the Bible from cover to cover. You don't have to know all of God's names. Amen. 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 Or his titles. Yeah. God is looking for somebody whose heart felt toward him. Amen. You want to know him instinctively. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But go to verse 19, Romans 1, 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has showed it unto them. Right? Uh -huh. For the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen. How can you walk outside, see the stars, see flowers, see the change of seasons, and say there's no God? Amen. That's what God is saying. Amen. How can you do that and say there's no God? Can't do that. Amen. Keep reading. Uh, which are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even in His eternal power and Godhead. That's the that's the triunity of God. Amen. Amen. So that they are without what? Excuse. They have no what? Excuse. So you can't walk around in the earth and talk about, you know, uh, there's no God and all this is happening. God said you're without excuse. He calls what I'm doing foolishness. First Corinthians. You see if I can find it. I hate to say things I can't.
can't prove it. I think it's chapter 1. Because uh, God said in that chapter, I think it's 1. There you go, verse 21. 121. 1 Corinthians 121. Oh, I got to move. This stuff ain't in my window. For after that in for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. See, you done got so smart you don't even know who God is. You won't even acknowledge him because it takes your intellect. You don't count it more in your intellect than God. So God said this. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So what I'm doing is foolishness. God said you should be able to go outside, look in the round world, and look, oh, there's got to be a Jesus. But he said, now I got to send this foolish black man up here to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. When you should know instinctively in your heart that he is God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, I guess I covered that. Let's go to his compassion. Mark 1. Woo. Mark 1. Come on, we got 10 more minutes. Mark, Mark 1. 1. <laughs> and then we're going to look at his cost. Mark 1. Mark 1. I think I'm just going to cover those real quick and come to a curve. Mark 1. Yep. Mark 1, look at verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with what? Compassion. Put forth his hand, touched him, and said unto them, I will be thou clean. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And as soon yeah. as he had spoken, immediately leprosy yeah. departed from him, and he was what? Clean. Amen. Yeah. God's compassion. Go to Matthew 20. <laughs> Matthew 20. I hope y'all getting something out of what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Now you learn you're without excuse too, eh? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You ain't got no excuse. All your yakking means nothing. Means nothing. 20 verse 30. Matthew 20 verse 30. And behold, two blind men. See, when you in sin, you're blind anyway. It ain't the fact that you can't see. When you reject Jesus, you in sin. You're blind as a bat. Amen. We know it. He knows it. We're just trying to get you to see. Open up your eyes. Illuminate your mind. Verse 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them. See that? When you start crying out for Jesus, people will tell you, Shut up. They're going to start rebuking you, interrupting you. They're going to start throwing what they believe at you. But watch what these blind men Come on, Come on, And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. Shut up! I ain't shutting up. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will you that I should do unto you? See, when you cry loud enough, he will stop for you. Hello. Yes, he going to stop by yes, for you. Yes, yes, he will. He ain't paying those multitude of people no mind. He heard the heart of you crying yes, out. Yes. And he going to stop. Yes, yes. My boy and my daughter want to see, and I'm going to make sure they see. Hello. Boy, y'all got me on fire with you this morning. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Verse 30, 33. And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. They knew what they asked for, too. There wasn't no denial of what they were asking for. So Jesus had what? Compassion on them. And touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. Open your eyes, people. All right, the cost. Let's go. Matthew 27. So, what makes God mercy? What makes God a merciful God? His character, personality, his compassion, and his cause. Matthew 27, then we come into a close, a couple more verses. Matthew 27. 
Starting verse 1. And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to what? Death. Yeah. And they, when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the, the Pontius Pilate the governor. Then Judas, ooh, uh, watch out for the Judas is in your life. Yeah. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder. Look at that. Jesus' life was only worth 30 pieces of silver. Is he worth a bag of crap? Is he worth a bag of weed? If he worth about 40, is he worth a woman to sit with or a man to sit with? Because you're selling him for less, that's less than these 30 pieces of silver. That was some rich money back then. Amen. Amen. Woo. Verse 4. Say, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Even Judas knew, knew that. And they said, what is that to us? They don't even care. What's it to us that you did that? What's it to us you, that you did that? Plenty of times I've been in the crack house preaching, they're like, what's that to us, brother? Shut up and fire up no. <laughs> Amen. Because they don't care. What's that to us? See down to it. That's on you. And he cast down the dirty... He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and did what? Hanged himself. That's why, stop trying to fight your Judas. Now, Judas is a person who's in ministry with you. Judas is a person who walks along with you. Judas is a person you chose as a friend. He ain't some jerk hollering her out. He's somebody who, who's walking with you. And if you keep trying to fight him, then God will send you more Judas. They'll train you how to obey. And when you decide not to fight your Come friend, on. not to fight your partner in ministry, he will do what? Hang him shit. Yes, sir. But anybody else who walks around who ain't in ministry who just want to curse you by their God or whatever, the same curse they do at you will fall on them. Because your God is being a nigga. You can't curse a man or woman that God don't think it's going to come back and not hit you. That's why I don't care who cursed me. Curse me by as many gods as you want. Because all you did was curse yourself. Amen. You touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Come on then. Woo! Don't got me going. Anyway. But he went up and hung himself. And the chief priest took silver pieces and said, verse 6 we are, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of what? Blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken of by, the, by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver in the price of him that was valued, whom they had the children of Israel did value. See, it was prophesied. Yeah. Yeah. And gave them for the potter's field, and the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Yes, and Jesus said unto him, You said it. Hello. Verse 12. And when he, was, when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. He said nothing. Then said Pontius, then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against you? Oh, they're going to try to bring you to court. Hello. And he answered them to, and he answered them to, never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. See, you got to learn how to shut up sometimes. I'm too prideful sometimes. I do. But it also depends on the attack. If it's a weak back, I'm cut. But it's a heavy attack, I'm shut up. But I know you're weak. I'm gonna, I got more strength than you. You ain't that powerful in my mind. Plus, I fear nothing. I should have been dead 100,000 times. So, you threatening me with death don't mean jack over here. Because I know who I'm going to be with. Amen? Final verse. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6. And this 6 this be it. 6 is, no, i got to close it with some joy. But look at this one. I need you to know. What was the price that Jesus paid for y'all, y'all? What was the cost of his mercy? His blood! 